Okay, it's true. I was wrong. Okay, I admit that the title of the video is a bit clickbaity, but stick with me. There's a point to it, and an apology. Over a year ago, I made an If I Could Only Have One between the Glock 26 and the HK VP9 SK. The SK1. It's a great gun. At the time, I made an executive decision about the 26. It was time to walk away. Although I'd had a long-standing relationship with the 26 for many years, I just didn't connect with it the way I once did. I appreciated the reliability and the concealability, but frankly, I felt there were more enjoyable subcompacts on the market. Well, I was wrong. To the Glock 26, I'm sorry. Sometimes we have to explore other opportunities before we realize that we had a good thing right in front of our eyes. What's that old saying? If you set it free and it comes back again, it was meant to be? Okay, okay, I admit that may be a bit overdramatic, but guys, I have to say, the relationship has indeed been rekindled. Let's jump in and see why. So to give you guys a little bit of background and why I've made this epiphany, you guys know I've been spending a fair amount of time with Polymer 80s, and that's because I've wanted something to do over the winter, and they've just been a lot of fun. So I've been testing guns like this guy right here. This is a, a new one to the collection, and I've been testing it based upon uh, Legion Precision, their barrel, and actually one of their compensators, this little guy right here, taking it to the range a couple of times and, and just took it off the gun to do some deep cleaning on it, but it has been a lot of fun. So a review uh, forthcoming for sure. But I've started to expand the Polymer 80 uh, collection a little bit, and the 26 was definitely uh, a target for me. My buddy Mateo, a lot of you guys know him, has been working on a 26, and, and uh, we talk a fair amount about Polymer 80s, and so I decided to dive in. Now, obviously, this is not the full build. This is just the frame. I've already done some fitment. You guys may have seen it on a RAND CLP video that I did, um, just doing some testing, and I'll explain that in a moment, but uh, I've got a project that I'm working on with Zafiri Precision with this, so I'm, I'm excited to show that, but I thought it was a good opportunity to go back and revisit the Glock 26, but I needed another test medium for that. I've learned with Polymer 80s that it's good to have some other parts that you can do your fitment and testing with, and so I decided to go with a Gen 4 Glock 26. It's unloaded, of course, I always do that. But I went with the Gen 4 first because I can do a lot of the fitment with the Gen 4 even though that frame is a Gen 3. Most of the parts are interchangeable, not all of them, but most. But then I also just wanted an excuse to get back into it. So I picked this up from Frontier Justice, my buddies over there, and uh, and, and I, I've spent some time with this. And I have to say, uh, my, my uh, judgments about this a little over a year ago, as I stated in the intro, I think were probably wrong. So I wanted to come back and I wanted to revisit this with you guys and just talk about why my thoughts on this have changed a little bit. All right, I've widened the camera just a little bit because I do want to give a quick comparison. Uh, we've actually got a Glock 19 right here. Of course, this is pretty pretty standard to compare against, but the Glock 26 versus the 19, that is definitely a very good comparison. Forgive the red dot, of course. Um, I've been running with the red dot on this for a while, but uh, I did put the flat base magazine back in it. But just to kind of give you an idea of where the Glock 26 sits. Now, the uh, Glock 19 is about oh, I don't know, 24 ounces, something like that, versus the 26 at about 21, 21 and a half ounces. So there is certainly a weight difference. And of course, just an overall size difference. But uh, the 26, for a long time when it first came out, it was one of the most well-known deep concealment firearms out there. And I had one for a long time, not right when they came out, but not, uh, not too long after. And I carried one for a long time as well. But as I stated before, as I started to explore some other firearms, especially in the subcompact arena or market, I just found that there were some that were a little bit more enjoyable to shoot. And especially with this flat base magazine, uh, my grip on it, you know, you, your, your pinky hangs off. And years ago, that wasn't really much of a problem. But now I find it to just not be quite as comfortable. It's workable. It's doable. In a pinch, you can definitely do it. But I just didn't find it quite as fun. One of the cool attributes of the 26 and really the Glock line in general is their magazine interchangeability. Now, this is also a 10-round uh, a magazine with a plus two from Glock. It's just their factory plus two. 
and I've been running it like this. And this is so much more comfortable because it gives me basically a full grip. It's still pretty small in the hand, but it just gives me a little bit more control. It's a little bit more enjoyable at the range. But some of the really cool things about the 26, here's a 15 round magazine. This works really well. It's a great backup magazine. They even make sleeves for it, that sort of thing. So you can really make it extremely comfortable in a full size grip. And speaking of full size grip, there's a Glock 17 magazine, 17 rounds, or even a Glock 34 magazine, whatever you want to say. And that fits very nicely. Also would serve as a backup magazine. And for extreme backup, of course, we've got the 33 round magazine as well. Again, it's just one of the really cool attributes about the Glock 26. I'm going to throw this one back in here because I just, I, I prefer this and I prefer the look of it. But all right, I brought the camera in just a little bit to take a look at some features. Now keep in mind, this is not really a full review. It's not uh, terribly detailed, but just to give you an, an idea of what's going on with the 26. Now, again, it's a Gen 4, so it's got the Gen 4, Gen 5 grip texture on it. I like the grip texture. Um, I, I think it does exactly what it needs to do. It's plenty bitey enough, but it's not gonna beat you up if you're carrying it. Now with the Gen 4, it does have the finger grooves versus the Gen 5 that doesn't. And I, you guys know I've had a lot of fun with the Gen 5s, like the 19, MOS that we saw a moment ago, uh, or the 45 or the 19X uh, with the lack of finger grooves. I've really enjoyed that. However, with the 26, I decided to go with this, with the Gen 4, because of the finger grooves. I, I get just a little bit more, uh, bite a little bit more control on it versus the Gen 5. So that's why I did that. Now, another thing that I'm doing a little bit differently, I'm actually running with one of the back straps. You guys know the Gen 4s come with a back strap system. There are four different ones. So I've got the, uh, the smaller of the two non beaver tail back straps and that has really uh, kind of changed things a little bit it fills my hand a little bit better and it is extremely comfortable so um, I'm, I'm glad I did that I'm sort of uh, kind of mad at myself for not doing it prior to this now our magazine release is not ambidextrous out of the box although Glock magazine releases are extremely easy to swap around just one little metal bar in there and you have to kind of move it around swap it and you're good to go and then we've got our slide lock slide release. Once again, not ambi uh, like the Gen 5s, but I'm pretty used to that. I'm a right-handed shooter. It doesn't bother me. Um, now I go with the flat uh, slide lock slide release rather than extended on the 26. For whatever reason, on the 26, uh, the extended one, I tend to bump it versus the 19 or 17, 34, something like that. And for carry, I just prefer that as well. Now in terms of trigger, you guys will notice there's actually an Overwatch precision trigger on it. Um, I like Overwatch. They're good. And I prefer a Apex, um, I'm just used to those, but I, admittedly, I was <laughs> out of Apex, and, and this trigger does just fine for me, and I've done a couple of other things on the inside, like the 25 cent trigger job, and uh, a different safety plunger, I think it's a Zev safety uh, plunger and safety spring uh, in there, just to make it a little bit more uh, to my liking, so uh, I've, I've dialed, in, uh, dialed it in just a little bit. In terms of takedown, we do have our takedown tabs, as you would expect, uh, once again, you do have to pull the trigger, and once you do, pull it back about an eighth of an inch, pull down on both of your tabs at the same time and it comes apart. And it's as you would expect for any Glock, I'm not gonna pull the whole thing apart again, not a deep dive, but it's one of the great things about Glocks. They're so easy not only to maintain, but also to work on and I really enjoy that about them. Now there's no accessory rail for lights, lasers, tiny ninjas, anything like that. And, and with guns like this, I don't generally run a light or anything. Now there are some aftermarket uh, lighting systems, I think like Viridian, that sort of thing that you can clip onto the front of the trigger guard, which does have a little bit of texture on it. So there are some options if it's really something very important to you. Now in terms of the slide, very plain Jane, like most Glocks are, does have the rear serrations on it as you would expect, but no front serrations, although the Gen 5 doesn't either. They may bring out one next year that does, who knows. And then right now I'm running stock sights on them. I don't like the stock sights, I don't like the polymer very much, uh, but right now I'm, I'm out of sights, uh, so I'll have to dial that in at some time down the road. And I have to admit, at the range, they actually did just fine, um, especially in a well-lit environment. But but again, that's basically it for your 26. I mean, it's pretty plain Jane. There's not a lot to it, but that's pretty much the same with other Glocks, and I actually appreciate that about them. So what really prompted this video other than the apology to the Glock 26? Well, it was the shooting experience. The shooting experience recently was a ton of fun. Now, admittedly, I didn't put a lot of rounds through it. I put 150 rounds through it because I was also testing that uh, Polymer 80 with the Legion Precision comp on it. That was day two of that testing. 
but uh, but the 26 was an incredibly pleasant surprise and that's something that's really meaningful to me when you can come back full circle and all of a sudden there's a better connection now i've made some tweaks and, and uh, different changes to my grip and my stance and, and just kind of the, the mentality as I go to shoot and just uh, uh, train or have some fun or uh, video things, whatever it happens to be. And I think all of those things combined led to a much better shooting experience. And, and I have to say the 26 was a lot of fun. It instilled a lot more confidence because prior to this, uh, a year plus ago and more, the last few shooting experiences were miserable. I could hardly hit the broadside of a barn, at least for, for my standards, and my standards are pretty low, but, uh, but it just wasn't as much fun. So I was so pleasantly surprised, and it got me thinking, man, I clearly am wrong about this. Um, it wasn't the gun, it was me. I, I was the difference uh, with that because the Glock 26 before was the exact same thing. It, it hasn't changed, it hasn't really evolved much. It's the shooter, and I was having bad days. I was shooting terribly a year plus ago with the 26, and, and this time I happened to have a really good day, and it reminded me that uh, that I shouldn't be too judgy about a certain firearm. So uh, that was the shooting experience. It was a lot of fun. So guys, what do I think of the Glock 26 with its new lease on life? Well, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm really excited to put this Polymer 80 together and see if I feel the same as I do with this Gen 4 right here. But I think there's a bigger theme going on here as well, at least for me, and it might be for you, it might not, I don't really know, but it's sometimes a good idea to go back and visit perhaps a gun that you have previously ruled out because things change, things change. Your shooting style changes, your stance changes, um, the way you approach a gun just in general, uh, the way you use your sights, um, your sight picture, all of those things can change over time, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, of course. But that means that uh, guns that you've previously maybe ruled out or not been interested in or had and just thought, eh, it's not for me, it might be good occasionally to go back and revisit and see if you're maybe missing out on a gun that might be really good. Now, I don't know necessarily what the purpose is yet for the uh, Gen 4. I think it'll probably go back into the carry uh, rotation eventually. I want to spend some more time with it, of course, because I've only had one range session with it. I'm hoping to go back and recreate that again if possible. But it would certainly uh, be a truck gun or a bag gun or something like that, if nothing else, because it's small enough, it's carryable and, and uh, certainly reliable. So it definitely has a place somewhere in the collection, somewhere in the system. But again, I'm just excited to uh, to, to have a, a rejuvenation of thoughts, so to speak. And, uh, and I was excited to share this with you guys. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say about this. If you've ever had a situation where you've kind of ruled out a gun for whatever reason, and then you decided to go back and revisit visit it and your thoughts have changed. I'm really curious if you've gone through that. If not, if you're thinking about doing that, that's really important too. So guys, be sure to sound off. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think uh, about this. If you agree or disagree, what your thoughts are. I'm always looking forward to a conversation with you. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.